Hi again everyone. In this video we're going to have a basic introduction to Fourier series and in particular we're going to discover how to calculate the Fourier series of a given simple function. Now before we get to that, what is a Fourier series? Well, if we have a function little f of t that has period 2L then we define and denote the Fourier series of little f as this S f of t and basically the Fourier series is just a series that involves cosines and sines. Now you'll see these coefficients here a0, an and bn when you want to calculate the Fourier series of a given function basically we calculate these coefficients via simple integration. Okay. Now we do make some assumptions on f so that all, all of these are well, well defined and um, our Fourier series will also converge. We basically assume that little f and its derivative are piecewise continuous on an interval of this type. But the question is why would you want to calculate the Fourier series of a function? Well Fourier series have their origins in modelling and in particular they're useful in solving differential equations both ordinary and partial that arise in the study of heat flow and also vibrations. And Fourier series provide a means of approximating discontinuous periodic functions over intervals rather than just near certain points. And this is one of their main advantage, uh, advantages over, for example, Taylor series. But this video is very basic, very simple. We're just going to solve an example and show you how to quickly and easily calculate the Fourier series of a given function. So here we're asked to calculate the Fourier series of this function, the function's periodic with period 2 pi. So what I'm going to do is first of all recognize that to calculate these coefficients we need big L. So big L is just half the period. And so L equals pi. Now let's sketch this function and see if there's any symmetry um, properties. The reason I'm, I'm doing this is because to calculate our Fourier coefficients, our a noughts, a n's and b n's, we rely on integration. And if we can simplify those integrations then that's a very beneficial thing. So let's see if we can sketch our function here and see if we can see any symmetry. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I've just sketched the graph of the function on the interval minus pi to pi. So what I do is I'm just going to copy and paste, copy and paste. Okay, and I get something like this. Okay, so I can see that my graph is, in fact, odd. Now by odd, I mean that if you take the graph and you rotate it 180 degrees around the origin, you don't change the graph at all. Another way of explaining this is that you can see everything to the left of the y-axis is the negative of everything to the right of the y-axis. Okay, so how does this help us? Well, let me show you. Let's calculate our Fourier coefficients using our formulae on the previous page. Okay, so the first and easiest one is A0, okay? So let's put this in and see if we can simplify. Now, 
Now, we've identified f as being odd. Now, because we're integrating from minus pi to pi, you can think of it as the area here and the area here. Now, this will be negative, this will be positive, and they'll cancel each other out. So that was pretty easy. What about a sub n? Well, a sub n is just given here. So for L equals pi, I'm just going to get something like this. OK, so now we have an odd function and cosine is an even function, which means the graph is reflected in the y-axis. Now, a simple property of odd and even functions is if you multiply an odd function with an even function, it gives you an odd function. So basically, the, the, the property up here also applies to here because we're integrating an odd function from minus pi to pi. The areas will cancel. So this gives you an odd function. So for n greater than or equal to 0, both of these coefficients are 0. So that was pretty easy. So what about the b sub n's? Well, if you look back to our list, we see the b sub n's are given in this way. OK, so let's examine the integrand here. We have an odd function, and sine is an odd function. So an odd times an odd gives us an even function. So now what we're doing is we're integrating an even function from minus pi to pi. And in that case, you can basically double the integral and integrate from 0 to pi. This simplifies things greatly. So if I look back to my f from 0 to pi, my f is defined as 1. So so now this is quite simple. I can integrate with respect to t. So if I make my substitutions in the usual way, I'll get something like this. Now, I can even simplify this further because cos n pi is just the following. Minus 1 to the n. Now, how does that help you? Well. You can see here, if n is even, then this is actually going to be 0. And if n is odd, this is going to be negative 2. So I can go a little further and simplify. So if n's odd, that'll be minus 2. So I'll get positive 4 on n pi. So I've calculated my 3 Fourier coefficients. Two of them were zero, and Bn is given down here. Okay, so now it's time to write write out my Fourier series. If I go back and just write out this with L equals pi and my a naughts, my ans, and my bn's, well, that's going to be zero. That's going to be zero, and all I have to do is write out the following. Okay, so if I recognize that zero and that zero, then I'm going to have the following. Now, all I'm going to do is sum over the odd terms here. Now, 
Now I'm only summing over the non-zero term, so that's why I've only started the sum, uh, or ha have odd um, values of n down here. If I want to write this out in something a little bit more recognisable, I can replace n with 2k minus 1. Okay, so that is my Fourier series. Now, notice there's no cosines here, there's only sines, so sometimes this is called a Fourier sine series. So, what does it all mean? Well, here, here I've used maple to sketch the tenth partial of this Fourier series that we just calculated. Now, if you compare that to the actual original f, which looked something like this, then you can see, hopefully, what's, what's happening. The Fourier series is wrapping itself around this original f of t. And as we um, increase the, the partial sum, so let's say you went to the hundredth partial sum, it would get the wrapping would get tighter and tighter and tighter, and in the limit it would actually converge to the original function f of t. Okay, so let's look at the bigger picture. That's how to calculate a Fourier series. What's a what's a, a, a slightly bigger picture here? Well, the first thing to do with method integration is required to compute the Fourier coefficients and the calculations will simplify if you can recognize the cases when f is either an odd or an even function. So that's very important. Some uh, Two more points that I haven't really mentioned. If f is continuous at a point c then the Fourier series at that point converges to f at that point. So you can see um, for example if we're at the point 2 we can see the blue graph is continuous at 2, and so in the limit, the Fourier series will converge to f of 2. If f has a, has a jump discontinuity at a point c, then the Fourier series converges to, I guess, the average of these two limits. So uh, you can see the blue graph has a jump at t equals 0. So what will happen is the Fourier series will actually converge to zero at the point t equals zero. Okay, so here's an example for you to do. Very, very simple example. Um, have a go at calculating the Fourier coefficients, and if you have access to Maple, then plot some of the partial sums.